fellow Rotarians have waited over a year for this. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. Our speaker today is Christine Brown from the Mercy Ship UK. And she hails from Stevenage. And uh, she's been in the business for a long time. <laughs> but I will let her tell you about it rather than stealing her thunder. Thank you. Okay, so firstly, uh, thank you very much for inviting me and a uh, lovely lunch that I didn't eat at my desk. Um, this here is the Africa Mercy. Uh, the picture there is when she was sailing into Cameroon about this time last year. And um, Mercy ships have been operating since 1978. So next month we will be 40 years old. So we partner with nations to transform the lives of individuals and leave a legacy of health care and everything in country is absolutely free of charge. Because this is Don and Dion, they are our founders, they're still very much involved in the charity and it was Don's dream to have a hospital ship. Um, and that is the Africa Mercy um, back in 2017. So this says 592 ports. We've just um, docked in Guinea in August of this year. So we're actually at now 593 ports. And in our 40 years, we've done over 89,000 life-changing services, surgeries with services, services worth more than £1 billion. 70% of the population live within 100 kilometres of a port, which is why our ship sails round the coasts of West Africa. So we arrived in Guinea and um, our Hope Centre, uh, which is a, a land-based clinic, is actually operating for the first time today. Surgery started two weeks ago. So we dock in each country for 10 months. So we normally get into country around about the middle of <coughs> August. It takes us around two to three weeks for our screening program and for our surgeries to start. And we're there for 10 months. And then maritime law says the ship, every ship has to come out of the water for checks and maintenance. And we normally sail to the Canary Islands. We have routine maintenance, any repairs, any refits done then and then we sail off to the next country. So if anybody would like to go out and visit the Africa Mercy, um, we do have a Rotary Day. It's normally the last weekend of July, and I've got some details to leave with you. So if your club's interested in a small group going out and having a trip around the Africa Mercy, you can do that in July of next year. And I know um, Nick Silito from your district governor from last year took a party out last year. <coughs> so, Point in the middle of it? Yeah. So obviously this is the ship. All this area here is a secure area. This area here, we normally have approximately um, 30 land vehicles parked there. It's obviously during the daytime the pictures taken. And this, this area here is the garage where they do, where they do all the maintenance um, of all of our vehicles. These three tents here are it is an area where um, the first tent here is, would be a screening tent, um, the second one would be for bandages and the third smaller tent is where we do physiotherapy and things like that. So aboard the ship we have five operating theatres, 82 ward beds, we have radiology, a laboratory and a pharmacy. So these are some of the operations that we do. So how do we select our patients? We have an advanced team that go out to country um, around about a year before we go into country. They work with the local hospitals, they work with the lo local doctors, they put up posters saying what sort of operations we can offer. Um, they go on to social media and radio and television and say the ship is coming. We then have a selection centre 
where thousands of patients wait to see the medical team. And um, in Guinea, um, our team saw just over 6,000 patients um, in a week to screen them. So there really is a need there. <coughs> and those that are candidates are given appointments to come to the ship. Now when we were in Cameroon last year, we tried for the first time, very successfully, our advanced team went out and using mobile phone technology, worked with some doctors um, in surgeries and in hospitals to be able to pre-screen patients and then they were invited along for screening because um, in years past to that there would be hundreds of thousands of people turning up and obviously security is a risk and also it's quite difficult to see all that number of people and a lot of them we were having to say no we can't help you so uh, the new screening pre process um, is working really well. <coughs> and you've just eaten your dinner, um, just a bit of a warning there are some quite graphic um, shots here. Um, this is Sam Benet. Um His story is absolutely incredible. Um, Sam Benet had heard that Mercy Ships was about to come. He was in his um, house. He heard it on the radio in Madagascar. This tumour had been growing for 19 years and it was believed to have come from a small dental abscess. Six of his friends carried him um, to the main road. He was too weak to walk himself. He sold a rice field to pay to the, for the bus and he reached the town and got to the pool. He walked through the port to the gangway and it's quite a unique story because every security guard could see the need and just let him through. Um, he arrived on the Africa Mercy with no appointment but they could see how desperate he was. He was rushed to deck three, which is where the hospital is, and he was assessed for surgery by the medical team. And um, our surgeons on the ship were um, by satellite coming back to um, surgeons both in the UK and America for advice before they started surgery because they knew it was a very um, complicated and risky surgery and he was told that he may not possibly survive the surgery and he said I'm already a dead man. The surgery took 14 hours but it was successful. He he spent several months in our outpatient centre, the Hope Centre, which is the centre I said has just um, started for business today out in Guinea, um, before he turned to his village. And I think some of you heard um, one of my colleagues, um, Ali, um, speaking at your district conference. Um, Sambani had 18 pints of blood in a blood transfusion. And um, it is literally a, a living blood bank. Um, they put a call out for people and Ali was one of those that actually donated blood to San Benet. and he actually walked um, two days with our team to walk from San Benet back to his village and he, they bumped into San Benet's wife on the way back and she didn't even recognise him, she just walked straight past him um, and they've been re reunited and they're living happily in their village. Um, this is Grace um, but you've all heard of CBBCs. There is a programme called um, My Life. It's called My Floating Hospital. And Grace appears on this programme. Um, she was just 17 years old. Um, she was obviously very distraught. She could hardly eat or drink. And this is Grace afterwards. Oh. And she's training to be a nurse. Um, and Grace, again, she stayed at the Hope Centre and had a second surgery. Um, before she returned home. We do a lot of cleft lip and palate work. Um, quite often when children come for, um, for screening for cleft palate, they're often quite malnourished. They would go into the Hope Centre, they may spend um, two or three weeks in the Hope Centre on a feeding programme so they're strong enough to actually have surgery. There's a lot of burns out in West Africa. They cook over open fires and pots. <coughs> Often children um, fall into the fire. So this is a, a, a burn contracture. And afterwards, again, uh, Sassaline stayed in the Hope Centre 
uh, continuing having physiotherapy till her arm was completely um, back to normal. <coughs> a lot we do a lot of orthopaedic work. This is Ulrich from mm. Cameroon. We do rehabilitation. We do a lot of women's health work. Um, quite often, ladies are a long time in labour. Um, very, mis very little midwifery out in West Africa, and often the child is stillborn, and the um, the lady is left with um, quite often single or double incontinence. And it's a very, very small operation for these ladies to get their dignity back and get back into their community. Often their family will outcast them, um, they're on their own. Can you imagine in that immense heat feeling like that? I was able to go out onto the Africa Work Mercy last year in October to volunteer for two weeks. And before I went, I saw those little children are really going to pull at my heartstrings. They're really going to be the ones that are going to, you know, when I'm in my cabin of a night time, I'm thinking, oh, it was actually these ladies. I remember one afternoon, um, our hospital ship um, deck is deck three. There are no windows on deck three. It is a, it is a hospital wall. So every afternoon between 2.30 and 3.30, anybody on the hospital deck that is able and wants to can go up onto deck seven where it's beautiful, you can see the sea, and because while I was there you can see Mount Cameroon. Um, there's little children on bikes and there's usually people playing music up there and playing Jenga and Connect Four. And this particular afternoon I went up and these ladies that had had their fissured operations came up. They were very nervous, they were looking around, they didn't want anybody to look at them. The nurses were helping them onto their seats and they were trying to sink into their seats like nobody could see them. And at the end of the afternoon, they were clapping their hands, they were tapping their feet, there, there were smiles from ear to ear for the music that was going on up there and just, just the love from everybody that was on the ship. And that really stayed with me long, well, long, long after I left the ship. We do a lot of general surgery. And this particular one, the smile on the mum's face is the poor little lad probably didn't know what lie ahead of them, but the, but the mum, the pure joy on the mum's face. So it's not just the family that we are supporting, it's the whole family. And quite often, if a parent has a cataract, a child will stay at home from school to be the eyes of that family. Mm -hmm. So the child's not getting an education, the parents can't work, so they're forced more and more into poverty. One small cataract operation can actually transform a whole family. And this is quite an interesting story because these three children all had double cataracts. They all went on board the Africa Mercy and had their surgery. And interesting, their <coughs> mum had had surgery on the ship 10 years previously. And they see each other and their mum for the first time after surgery. We do a lot of dental work. Um, our dental clinics are normally land-based. So when we go out to country, we get... Um, the government give us some buildings that we work with the locals to do them up, make them clean, make them sterile. Um, and so the dental team, they live on the ship, they go out each morning. And when I was out on the ship, I met up with two dentists from the UK that had gone out for two weeks. And I said to them, you know, one day over breakfast, I said, well, how's it going in the dental clinic? And they said, it's such hard work compared to at home because we're standing in the middle and there's four dental chairs and we're literally going one, two, three, four and as that patient's getting out, they're sterilising the chair down, the next patient's coming in. And in Cameroon we saw just over 11,000 patients oh in our dental clinic. So our dental team do work really hard. Unfortunately we, we can't cure everybody, um, we can't treat everybody, um, so we do have a palliative care team that when a, pa when a patient comes to us and they have a terminal illness, our team work with them to make sure that they are comfortable and they have as much as they possibly can to make their last days um, as comfortable and pleasant as possible. As I say, um, in Cameroon, the, the, the service that we've just finished, we, don't, we did um, 
2,746 surgeries. It was quite interesting. We trained about the same number of local healthcare professionals while we were there. Um, and I say um, 11,000 um, patients, um, but obviously some of them needed uh, more than one procedure. And everything to our, our patients is completely free of charge. Um, medical capacity building is really, really important to us. Um, Dr. Michelle White, uh, one of our UK volunteers, is out on the ship um, quite a lot and uh, she helps us with our medical capacity building. So we're training and mentoring local professionals is really important <coughs> for us. When we were in Benin, we trained 30 healthcare professionals and they in turn went on to um, train almost another thousand people since we've left the service before last. Um, we provide medical tools and resources and we build better medical facilities so obviously you can see the before and after uh, and when we leave country the way we go into country is um, <coughs> we only ever go in on the invitation of the government um, and we're normally working about five years in advance so we know well, we're in Guinea at the moment we know our next service is in Senegal so we're already working uh, with the government in Senegal and there's terms and conditions on both places we always have to have free port side and we always have to have some sort of building given to us from our dental clinic and our hope centre. <coughs> we then work with the locals, we pay the locals to do it up. And when we left um, Cameroon, our hope centre became a women's um, health clinic of excellence. So there's all that negotiation going on with the governments there. So more people die in low income countries than HIV, AIDS, TB and malaria combined and obviously that's something Mercy Ships is doing <coughs> to make a difference. So that's um, the operating room in Madagascar before and that's after. I don't know about you, I know where I'd rather have my operation. Um, training is really, really important to us. Um, when we leave a country, we make sure that we go back to that country um, regularly. We make sure they're keeping up the um, standards that we've trained and anything new that we've learned <coughs> to share with them. So um, no point training people and just leaving them. Let's make sure that they carry on as when we leave. So something about the crew. Now I know Rotary, your, um, your motto is service above self. And I think that's one of the things that's quite humbling about our volunteers. Um, there's approximately 1,300 volunteers on the ship each year from 40 different nations. All volunteers pay their own crew fee, their own travel and their own immunisations. And when I went last year, um, I, did, I was very lucky, I had my husband's parents paid for most of my trip. Um, one of my colleagues um, came along with me, so we did quite a few little bits of fundraising, the sort of things that you Rotary guys like. We did a race night, a few coffee mornings, and so on. <coughs> and forth. Um, but with immunisations, flight and crew fees, the, the cost of a two-week trip is around about £1,600. So um, everybody pays that themselves. Um, and there are over 200 different jobs, and only half of them are medical. It literally is like a floating village. Um, we even have a Starbucks on deck seven. Um, you can get um, your Starbucks and sit up on deck. Um, so, you know, we, ha we have um, just there is, is our academy. We have um, an academy on board with between uh, 40 and 50 different um, students in there. So we have teachers. Um, if you're a teacher and you're on the ship, the minimum volunteering role would be one year um, for continuity. And at the moment, we actually have three UK teachers um, living out on the ship. So, lots of different um, jobs. So the national offices, um, we are one of 16 different international offices. The charity started um, in the US. The US still is our biggest um, office. Our head office is in um, Texas. And after the US, the UK, we send more volunteers than any other country and we raise more money um, after the US. So a bit of an endorsement there from Nelson Mandela. 
So that's me when I was out there. Um, I did two weeks in the galley. I'm not medical. Um, it was hard work. It was on my feet from seven in the morning till seven at night. Some of the pots I had to pick up were probably weighed more than me. And once water was in them, I could hardly lift them. It was a, it was a, it was a two man job. Um, but that's the whole of the galley team there. So it's a very small team. There are 450 um, crew members. There are approximately 80 to 100 patients living on board the ship. And each patient has to have a caregiver. And on top of that, we have um, day crew, about 100 day crew. So you're cooking at each meal anywhere between 700 and 1,000 meals three times a day. So it's a lot of food that goes through that kitchen, um, but, but very, very rewarding. And it was quite interesting when you sat in the dining room, you would sit next to somebody that would say to you, thanks for coming, and you would think, this is a top surgeon, why are they thanking me? All I'm doing is like preparing the, mo the food. And they would say, we can't eat, we can't do our job. So everybody is an equal on the ship. And that's something I didn't quite believe before I went. But when I was there, absolutely everybody is there for the same reason, and that's to make sure that that patient gets the care that they need. So this is one of our young ladies that had a facial tumour. And this is a quote from um, Dr. Gary Parker. He's um, our chief medical officer. He has lived on the ship with his wife and family for over 20 years as a volunteer. Um, absolutely incredible man. And what he says is we can't change the whole world, but we can change the whole world for the individuals one life at a time. So how can you guys support Mercy Ships? Obviously, we need money to run the ship. Go. Could you be a volunteer? Do you know someone who could be a volunteer? Um, our volunteering website has some great information on there. So there's over 200 jobs. If you've ever thought about it, just go and have a look. I can honestly say, my husband didn't come back with me, so I had to be really, really careful. So he didn't come with me, um, or come back. Um, I had to be really careful what I said, but it honestly was two of the best weeks of my life. Um, and I'm already applied to go um, back in October next year. It was just an incredible experience. So if you've ever thought about it, have a look. Or get involved, just spread the words. Um, more people know about us. So if you know of any other clubs that would like a talk from us, um, if you'd like us at your district conference, we would love to come. Um, please ask us. And obviously, we'd, you know, we'd love to partner with your club. We'd love to keep you informed of what we're doing. Um, so thank you very much, and more than happy to take any questions. Talk about working with the government. Is that a positive situation? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we, we have um, the government's literally queuing up to talk to us. Uh, particularly if we like Guinea, it's, it's the third time we've been into Guinea. Yeah. So they were obviously desperate to have us back. They could they saw the work when we went into Cameroon last year. It was the first time we've been in Cameroon, and. As you can imagine, the ship turns out there's this big white ship, a lot of white doctors, a lot of witchcraft out there, um, you know, voodoo and all of that sort of thing going on. And after one or two weeks, when they see what's going on, you know, the relationship is, but it is good. But as I say, every country we've been to, they want us back. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Any other question? Is everybody a volunteer on there, or do you have paid workers as well? There are the, the one paid the one paid job that is always a paid worker is the Gurkhas. The security is always important to us, and we have to have the Gurkhas. As a general rule, everybody is a volunteer. The only time we would pay a worker is if it was a critical position. So some of the maritime positions, the ship cannot operate without that position. And if we couldn't get a volunteer for that position, we would pay them for that position if we had to. But as a general rule, but they are all volunteers, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do, you, do you have any uh, friction between the local medical um, doctors or organization with this? Because obviously you're colluding in their in the practices. Uh, because especially in Southeast Asia, these patients will be going for private practice and uh, if you offer them free treatment, 
obviously they don't like it. I think there's so many thousands of people that need the treatment compared to how many doctors there are. Oh, okay. You know, over here, you know, one doctor for X amount of people over there, it's 20 times more, so they would never be able to see the number of patients that, that are, uh, I mean, desperate need for anything. Okay, that was a wonderful presentation. I cannot repraise things that you do. Uh, you tell us that your volunteers go, you have their own time and their own cost. It's a wonderful example of human sacrifice and dedication to help the needy, to reach help to those people who would never otherwise would have got it. So uh, fellows, please put your hands together to give a big hand. Home Church and uh, Rotary, Home Church mm -hmm. and Minister Rotary Club, would like to donate an amount of one thousand pounds to Amazing. charity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love his copy. I suppose you can talk quite quietly. Yeah, yeah. We can speak. He's not taping this as well. Quite members behind us. Oh, what an excellent idea. Hello, if you're ever wanting to know. Right, any other announcements?